I am a savant when it comes to airline crashes. I just know dates. I know a lot about this for some reason. And Malaysian Airlines is the biggest mystery in my lifetime. This plane disappeared. This Friday uh, marks 10 years since the disappearance of, of MH370. Now, tragically on that, some 239 people uh, were on board. And now there's a company that wants to find it and thinks they can find it. And the Malaysian government is resisting. Let's give a little bit of context. On March 8th, 2014, there was a flight that was leaving Malaysia, going from Malaysia to Beijing. It carried about 240 people. 38 minutes after the flight takes off, the air traffic control center loses connection. About an hour after the flight takes off, the Malaysian military system loses them off of the radar. They're off of the radar because the flight deviates from the path. And, and flies for hours, apparently. Inside the cockpit, okay, you've got basically three ways to track this plane. The first one was a transponder, which was turned off. So that means your secondary radar can't pick it up. Which is a purposeful act. Purposefully, yeah, it's an easy switch. And then the second one, though, is that something called the ACARS. Now, the ACARS is a way that the satellite system uses to communicate back to the operator of the plane and to ATC. Now, that's harder to turn off because you have to know a lot about the plane and probably pull circuit breakers. Okay, but that eventually looks like it went off too. So you have two out of the three methods for tracking this plane that weren't working, um, that were purposefully, appear to be purposefully disrupted. But we do know it reversed course. We do know that it was last seen by the Malaysian uh, military radar again, going the wrong direction back over towards the Indian Ocean. If you look at the course direction of the flight after the second tracker was manually turned off, that was when they changed direction. They no longer thought anybody had eyes on them. The reason that the Malaysian government did not come out with this until a little bit later is they did not want to tell the rest of the world just how advanced some of their air traffic control was on a military level. More of a national security risk, but they were tracking them for quite a long period of time. The thing where this kind of goes off is that I believe something happened in that flight where maybe the co-pilot took over, but then I think the plane might have been shot down. Shot down after flying for five hours off radar? Yes, and this is the reason I think that could be true. We have a witness statement from some of the residents who inhabited one of the islands near the Maldives. They believe they saw this plane in the early morning hours, and it was flying in a direction that would have taken it to a potential military base. How do they know it was that plane? There are plenty of planes that fly around. They don't know it was that plane. However, if it was that plane, it would have been flying in a pathway that was going towards a military base from the US, Diego Garcia. If there is a plane that a US military base has no way to communicate with, they don't see it on air traffic control, they're going to assume that is a terrorist threat. They will shoot that plane down, and only after the fact will they realize it was a commercial airliner and they took out over 200 souls so on board. Is, so this is a 911 prevention, you know, uh, uh, takedown, basically. And that would explain maybe the need for a cover-up. Exactly. In the following years after this actually all occurs, there's about 39 pieces of this plane that are found by 27 different people. Uh, not so fast, because there's some sketchiness here with some of the, especially one guy who says he found all these parts all of a sudden. Now, there are people who think it was made up. Investigators are now looking at some of the wreckage, which is confirmed to be from Malaysia Airlines. And one of those pieces is called a flapper on. Now the flapper on is uh, a piece that's not on every plane, but a 777 has this between the landing flaps and the ailerons. You can see here that it's in an extended position, right? So one of the investigators, Larry Vance, believes it's extended because the pilot was trying to bring the, the plane down for a soft landing. But why? Because he didn't want it obliterated into a thousand pieces. He wanted it to be sunk in one solid piece and not be found. There's something about all the parts that were found. That's the real other conspiracy here, is that people think if this was the US military's fault, if the plane was wrongfully shot down, the parts have been planted. Some people claim that it had, you know, charred parts to it. The top layer of paint has been singed, scorched, 
black. It also shows some signs of melting. And so I, I, I see where that's coming from there. Is there a world where a plane can crash and there can be survivors that are stranded somewhere? No, because if I survived, I'm letting you know I survived. Like, but if the plane is, is taken down and you don't have a radio and you're in this remote area, is it possible Water that you... landings are extremely rare, even, even with a great pilot. If you set it down right, you have a couple minutes. It's filled with air. It's pressurized. If it were pressurized, no damage. Miracle in the Hudson. We are getting word of a U.S. Airways plane crash in the Hudson River. All 150 passengers and five crew members survived. That's why it was a miracle, because it, like, never happens, you know? There's a theory that Captain Shaw, who was the captain of the plane, intentionally crashed it. The reason why this theory is floating around and sort of like catching some wind is that apparently they found in Captain Shaw's home a flight simulation. Hi everyone, uh, this is a YouTube video that I made um, as a community uh, service. And this flight simulation was sort of geared toward the area where they think the plane disappeared. You could look at the flight logs. He deleted his final flight log in the simulator in his home. That's only for him to see. Yeah, this simulator is a smoking gun. Why would the Malaysian government resist a highly sophisticated company that could help find this airplane. Why? Malaysian culture has a very, very heavy stigma around suicide. Yes. And one of the theories surrounding this case is that the pilot was taking his own life in addition to possibly taking others. Yes. So I feel like culture is a big, big, big component to this. There's so many things to this. I think we actually need to find the plane itself. It's worth trying to get the truth versus trying. The bad PR is damned if you do, damned if you don't. Let's get the truth, why not?